Greetings. In this screencast, we're going to be looking at setting up email accounts using the virtual min control panel. Now, the first thing you have to understand when you're going to set up an email address is exactly what kind of email address you want. There's two main types of email. One is a mailbox and the other one is a mail forward. When you're setting up a mailbox, it means that when a message is sent to that particular address, it's going to be stored and saved on this server, wherever you're setting up the mailbox itself. A mail forward will take that message and forward it along to another account. Now there's a bunch of different ways you can set both of these up and sometimes you actually have hybrids where it stores a copy of the message locally and forwards it on to another address. So we'll go through all the different types of mailbox, um, mail forward, hybrids, something called aliases, and go through how to set each one up in turn. But to start we're going to set up with the most basic and that's just a regular mailbox. So here I'm in, logged into my virtual min control panel. I've just got a sample site up here and I want to set up a new mailbox. And the way you do that is to go over to edit users. Click on edit users and it will show you any users or mail addresses that are already set up in the system. Now this is an example of what the server might look like after it's first been set up when you just initially get it. And there'll always be one user. Yours will say something different. It would be your main master username for accessing the system. So what we want to do to set up a new mailbox is add a new user to this server. So we'll click the add a user to this server button. That will give us the ability to put in what mailbox we want. So I'm just going to create one called example. And I can put in the person's real name if I want. That's really just a note for myself. And finally a password. Now it's important to select a secure password. This is for email. The user will be able to change their own password later. Um, and it's something that you need to write down or track somewhere else, probably not write down, but use something like a password manager or a formula so that you have a secure password. You will not be able to come back and look it up in the system later. The only way you can go is to reset the password if it's forgotten. So I'll just pick a sample password here. I'm just going to put in uh, something. And then you've got a bunch of settings. Now, the most important one is under email settings and mail forwarding settings for the user. So you want to make sure under email settings that this address is enabled, which would be the default. And under mail forwarding settings, because we're doing a mailbox, we want it to be checked to say yes, deliver this to the mailbox. And that's going to store messages that are sent to example at and then the domain in this mailbox so that somebody would actually have to have an email client like Outlook or Thunderbird or iMail or their mobile device to come in and actually get those messages off this server. So once those are all set up the way you want, you just hit create and that will save that new user and that new mailbox on the server. From that point on, this is a new active email address, example at. Um, pay close attention to the username, which is listed here, example dot and the, after the dot will always be what the main user is for the server. So again, yours will say something different, but it's going to say example dot or the email that you said dot and then whatever your main user is, even though the email address is example at and then whatever that address is. So that's how you set up a mailbox. And as soon as you set it up, it's already ready to go. Now the settings on the person's client, I'm not going to cover how you set that up in this, but if you go to your control panel, you'll see all the mail server settings, the password that you put in will be the one that you use, and what the ports and all that information are. This is, I'm just covering how you set them up on the server. So that's a mailbox. Let's say we want to set up a mail forward um, that goes from this server's email address to somewhere completely different. Now, this is a, a, the sort of, sort of second most common case. So let's say somebody has a Gmail address and you want to forward it from a new email that you're going to create on this server to that Gmail address. The best way to do that, instead of adding a new user, is to go into Edit Mail Aliases. So if we'll go in there, it looks a little bit different, and you'll see there already are some aliases. And these four aliases must exist on every mail server. It's part of the mail standard, so don't delete them. The Abuse, Hostmaster, Postmaster, and Webmaster are always supposed to be there. But what we want to do is add a new one. So we'll click on Add an Alias to this domain. And I'll put this in as uh, just example two, at, and then the domain. And no, I don't want to deliver this to, an e to a mailbox anymore. This one's going to forward to some other address. So I check off forward to another address, and I put it in here. And I'll just put in my own Gmail just for fun. 
So I was going to say if anything sent to example2 at and then this domain, I want to forward to my Gmail address. The other thing in these aliases is you can set up for automatic replies and out of office replies and those kind of things. That can all be done in here too, but I'm not going to cover that in this video. Just going to talk about how to set them up. So this will create a new email address called example2 at and then your domain and it'll forward it to the address that I've specified here. So I can create that. Now you'll notice it shows up in here in the aliases. If I go back to edit users, I'm not going to see it because I didn't create a user, for example, too. I just created an alias. We don't treat just a direct forwarding as a new user. It's just a, a forward. The, the actual mail server itself doesn't even really look at the message. It just says, oh, anything comes in on here, I just send right out again. So it doesn't store it, doesn't save it anywhere. You can't get webmail for it here. It's just like a pass through. It's like a name change. That's why they call them an alias. So now let's cover another example. So far we created this example at, and it's for Pat Smith. Let's say that we want Pat Smith to also receive emails that are sales at. So now we want to have two different addresses for one mailbox. So to do that, and it's an existing mailbox, I'll click back into the example user, which we created just a minute ago, and I'll go in here under email settings. And you'll see that there's a space here that says additional email addresses. So I can put in here, I also want sales at. And I don't have to put the at and then the domain. I can just put sales. It'll fill that in automatically. So I want one for sales. And if I wanted to, I could put another one in and I could put service. And I can just separate them by lines. I can put as many as I want. There can be any number of different aliases for this example address. So it wouldn't matter which address somebody sent the message to. They could send it to an example at, sales at, service at. They're all going to go into this one example.sflp, in this case, user. And it's that particular mailbox. So I could save that. Now that's kind of the third different case. So now we have both a mailbox with multiple aliases going to it, but it's still a mailbox and all the mail is staying locally. So there's one more case which would be sort of the, the uh, all-encompassing case where I want all the different things to happen. I want to have this example at email address as a user, so I've got a mailbox on my server, but I also want it to forward somewhere else. So here I would go opening the mail forwarding settings, and in here I can check off the box, say yes, forward this to an address as well. And I could also forward this to a Gmail. Like that. So now what's going to happen and remember, I had some aliases in here for sales and service. So now, if somebody sends an email to any of example at, sales at, or service at, it's going to store it in the local mailbox and it's going to forward it to my Gmail address. So let me give you an example of why you might want to set something up like this, especially for a business email. And this is just a, a brief discussion about the best ways to set up email. Um, mobile devices and desktop clients both trying to hit the same mailbox at the same time sometimes can cause problems and I don't usually recommend doing that. So if you want to be able to get your email from in two different places like on your phone and on your computer this is kind of the configuration I recommend. And it doesn't really matter about the aliases you can have aliases or not but it's to both deliver it to a mailbox and send a forward probably to a Gmail. Um, the, the benefit of doing that Gmail works really, really well on mobile devices, regardless of whether they're Android or iOS devices. Um, and it's really handy to just send all your messages there. It also means that if you're at some other computer, you can go on to Gmail and grab your messages there. The beauty of having it in your mailbox for any sort of business communication is that's your record where you can download the messages to a computer and keep it backed up and have full control over it because it's important to keep in mind, Gmail, you don't have control over. Really, Google has control over that. You don't. And it's not as easy to back those kind of things up. It also doesn't give you an audit trail for the future. If you need to go back and find a sent mail uh, message for years and years past, it's always better to keep a copy of that on a controlled computer somewhere that you have. So if you want a duplicate message where you're receiving it on a phone and on your computer, this is the best configuration. Set up an email, the address you want, with the password that the person's going to use to access it, set it up as a mailbox, and also set it up as a forward. 
So that's kind of the, the best case scenario, and I'll just save this. And you can have, depending on the type of package you have for hosting, you have any, usually it's up to 50 different mailboxes and any number of uh, the aliases. And you can always go in under aliases and set up aliases there. One note, because we set up some aliases in that example user, you'll notice now that in here, we'll see that sales and service alias we set up going to that example user. That'll show up in this alias table because they are just aliases. It's not sending it to some other address, it's just sending it to this existing mailbox on the site that we created already. So, quick recap, if you want to set up a mailbox, which is a place where messages are going to get stored on the server and you need a mail client in order to download them, again, something like Outlook or iMail or Thunderbird, uh, you set that up under Edit Users and Add a User to the Server. It's going to ask you for that uh, user's email address that you want to create and a password so that they can access it. If you just want to set up a forward, you go under Edit Mail Aliases and you can add a new alias to this domain and set up those to go anywhere. So this example 2 is, a, is an example of that where it takes this address, example 2, at the domain and forwards it directly over to a Gmail address. There's no way for this particular case for that person to log into this server and do anything because they're not a user. And then the other case is where you have a user on the server and you want to set them up with a couple of aliases perhaps and also to be a forward. And that's what we did in this example users case here where we had some aliases in the email settings. So they're getting messages sent to example at, sales at, and service at. And also that mail is all being forwarded over to their Gmail as well. So those are how you set up your mail accounts on the server. I hope that helps and have a great day.